Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another card making video tutorial. Today we're going to have four cards, one colorway and four cards. This is one of my favorite time saving techniques. These cards feature brand new products and some previously released products from Pink Fresh Studio as part of the June 2023 blog hop for Pink Fresh Studio. So please be sure to visit my blog for uh, giveaway opportunities and hop along. Today, I am going to be using the peachy pink coral colorway for my cards. The two main sets I'm using are Peony Fantasy and Lovely Blooms. We will start with Peony Fantasy first. I'm warming up my Glimmer Hot Foil system and just removing that tape there from the back of my hot foil plate. Now, one of the reasons Pink Fresh Studio is so great for time saving is as you can see, all of these blooms are on one hot foil plate. You're not having to foil multiple plates. I am going to use some Aura foil from Spellbinders and I am using the Hammer Mill cardstock. This is the best cardstock, in my opinion, for foiling perfect results every time. And I am going to foil a couple of these. I always like to have a few extra by the time I get to the stenciling. Now, because it makes so many blooms, as I was saying, you can split them up up among many cards. You could also use them all on one card if you want to, but today I'm going to share how to mix and split them up. In addition to the uh, Peony Fantasy Hot Foil Plate I just foiled, I want to do all my foiling at once. And I am foiling some of the Nested Hexagons. This is a previously released previous release, pardon me, and I am going to foil a few sizes, about the three middle sizes of this set. In the set there are five different sizes and then we're also going to be using the nested hexagons dies to create frames. This is going to just create a nice coordinating type of product to go with our floral blooms and I will use these on both cards even though um, the <clears throat> pardon me lovely blooms I'm going to stamp and emboss the other great thing about pink fresh studio is that if you don't foil if foiling isn't your thing or you don't have the machine there is a stamp set I used the foil plate but you could stamp and emboss the stamp set instead and get a similar type of result. I will be doing that on the second set that doesn't come with a foil plate. One of the reasons though, and I discovered it, I think I haven't been able to put my finger on it till today. Foiling does give you a different look, yes. But um, when I was stamping and embossing the second set of blooms, the lovely blooms, I realized part of the reason I love foiling so much is less mess. I kept dumping my embossing powder on my work surface and it just really reinforced to me that foiling is a little less messy, <laughs> but it definitely is a different look. Now I did use two dies per foiled frame so that I could make it a frame. What I love is you can make it a solid hexagon shape or a frame like I'm doing today and maybe you don't have the hexagons but you have the diamond shape or the circles. Pink Fresh Studio has lots of different basic shapes like this that can be used in all kinds of fun ways. Okay now that we have all of our foiled components let's start stenciling our blooms and we are going to start with that peony fantasy set and I'm going to take several colors of ink and I realized after I had um, already stenciled it that I missed filming most of this so I do apologize. The colors are Lemon Whip, Peach Fuzz, Coral Reef, and Passion Fruit. That is what I used for um, my blooms here today. And I'm going to use the same colors when I stencil the second set of flowers. So hopefully that is going to give you a really good idea there of what I'm doing. And again, I am sorry that I missed the filming of that. I did not realize my camera had shut off. 
Once I'm done foiling, I am gonna die cut all of those shapes. Let's go ahead and stamp the lovely blooms. This is gonna give you a really good idea of how I did the Peony Fantasy as it's basically the same step as, as with the stenciling. I love that Pink Fresh Studio stencils are numbered. That does help with what to do first. Oh, and the greenery, I did forget to say, is Fresh Pear and Meadow. I'm gonna stamp this a couple times. I am using my Misty, mostly because I've never stamped this particular image before. And I stamped it with a clear embossing ink and will heat emboss with antique gold embossing powder. And I literally kept making such a huge mess everywhere, but <sighs> such is life. Once I have all of my embossing powder on here, I am going to go ahead and heat set this. You can emboss this in any color, but I really wanted to show how you can kind of get a similar look to the foiling, as well as I liked that gold outline a lot. I think it'll be really pretty and it's going to help me tie in both sets of cards very similarly so that it looks like a cohesive card set. That's probably one of my favorite things when playing with all of these great images from Pink Fresh Studio is even though these are two completely separate sets, you can really mix and match to have a very cohesive look. And stenciling does save tons of time. I know we talk about this all of, all of the time. Anytime we are working with layering stencils here, just that they are a huge time saver, as well as for anyone who doesn't either love coloring or isn't, you know, happy with their coloring results. Maybe they you aren't a confident colorer. This is so much quicker. And for me, this is a way to make a lot of cards in not very much time. If you are coloring in each individual bloom, it's much more time consuming. I'm following the stencils, the numbers on the stencils, and just going to fill them in. That was Fresh Pear. Now we're going to use the Meadow ink. And I am using the exact same colors. The only color I didn't use for this set, the Lovely Blooms, is the Lemon Whip. Lemon Whip was used for the flower centers and also along the edge of some of the leaves in the Peony Fantasy. We're gonna start with Peach Fuzz here. I'm just double checking with my stencils. <laughs> Sometimes I like to lay them out just so I can get a better visual. We're gonna add that Peach Fuzz. I tried to use what was left on my brush from the previous set of flowers, but I needed a little bit extra. And next, we are going to use Coral Reef. I really like these colors used together. It's a very fresh color combination. Definitely gives those summer type of vibes. I'm going to use Coral Reef again. I know I get passion fruit out, but I realized pretty quickly I want to do these in Coral Reef. So I do want to mention that. I was like, don't touch that ink pad. That's not the one we're using. <laughs> So I'm just adding all of the leftover ink on my brush, and now we are going to use Passion Fruit. Passion Fruit is, and Coral Reef are probably two of my most favorite colors from Pink Fresh Studio. Um, so is Peach Fuzz. I don't know what it is, but I just love these particular shades and hues of color. So now we're gonna take the coordinating die for this. And again, this is another great time saver and something that Pinkfresh Studio does a lot is that their die is all one piece. The stamp was all one piece, the stencils are all one piece, and the die is one piece. This eliminates the need of having to line up multiple dies, multiple stencils, multiple stamps. This is why it's a time saver. You can use these all on one card, but you'll see that I split these images among two and it works fantastic. So now that we have all of our flowers, we have one last thing to prep before we can put it all together, and that is going to be our sentiment. So um, a couple of months ago, 
Pinkfresh Studio came out with the basic banners birthday and the basic banners dies. Oh, I guess I did my backgrounds first, pardon me. Let's go ahead and do our background. Now this is a previously released product. This is the Diamond Plaid Stencils. And they are made to use one at a time, but I was being super lazy. And so I layered them and I am going to use Peach Fuzz and Coral Reef to do a really pretty blend. So this is gonna give us beautiful backgrounds. I know I talk about this all the time in my videos, but I am a fan of some sort of decorative background. I am not a huge fan of a plain background for my cards. I love the look in other people's cards, but when I go to do it, I have such a hard time with it. And I often love um, subtle stenciling or stamping or a text background or a splatter background or a subtle emboss background, something that has a little bit of texture and interest. So I am blending these two colors together. Obviously anything underneath the stencil shape is going to be white, which is gonna be, a little too prominent for me. So whatever ink is left on my blending brushes, I'm actually going to take now and I am going to just very, very lightly go over those areas, filling in the white. And I'm gonna do this with both the, the Peach Fuzz and the Coral Reef. And that looks good. And look how pretty the frame is gonna look on there. I'm very happy with this. I tested it out and I'm like, yes, that is exactly what I want. So I have three more backgrounds here. I am going to stencil them exactly the same way. I did use a magnet from my Misty to hold my stencils down in place. The glass mat here from Simon Says Stamp is magnetic. So if you've got some nice strong magnets, you can use that to hold your stencils down while you're inking, which is fantastic. That way I didn't have to use pixie spray or really worry about having my fingers in the way too much. You can use these stencils one at a time or separately. I have used these multiple times in my videos here. This is a set that I feel like just is so useful in so many ways. And the other thing I did with this this time was I didn't take the ink all the way to the edge of the stencil, almost, but not quite. So you'll see that kind of faded look along the edges when I remove my stencils. It just kind of fades off into the edge of the background because my backgrounds do measure four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So A2 sized here. You could trim them down a little bit smaller if you wanted to, but because I have that kind of faded in look, it almost, gives that illusion of a matted type of effect, I guess is what I'm looking for. I just don't want the color being super harsh all the way to the edge of the panel. Obviously it goes to the edge of the panel in a lot of, a lot of places, but it's just lighter. Once I have all of these, I am going to stamp my greetings. That way I have all of my components for my cards. So this is going back to what I started to say a minute ago. The basic banners came out a couple months ago with the happy birthday set. So it is a greeting set that is all on one stamp and then the die is all one piece. Well, this is the Everyday Sentiments. This is new for June 2023, but it coordinates back to that same die. I love this. I love when companies have a stamp set that comes out that coordinates coordinates back to a previously released product, making that product that much more um, useful and economic. And so we are going to stamp our greeting with the clear embossing ink. We're gonna sprinkle on the antique gold embossing powder again, and then we will die cut this with the coordinating die. Now I do wanna say that I made a slight technical error. I wasn't thinking. You'll notice I stamped my greetings um, on the half sheet of cardstock going this way. So my, my, my cardstock is portrait. It's okay for all but one of the sentiments. One of the banners is gonna get cut off a little bit. So I really only lost one greeting. And even at that, I probably could still make it work. So I did want to mention that because I made, I just wasn't thinking. It really works better if you flip this horizontally and just leave yourself plenty of room for the edges of those banners. So when I go to line this up and I'm looking at it, I'm like, 
oh my gosh, did I just mess all of this up and do I have to redo everything? But um, actually it worked out just fine. So you can see the miss you so much act hangs off the edge a little bit, but all of the rest die cut perfect. So I just wanted to mention that in case you get it at home and um, you do the same thing and maybe you've cut your cardstock a little bit thinner and you cut off a bunch of the edges of your banners. I've run over to my die cutting machine. I'll just die cut that really quick. Now we have all of our products. We have our flowers, we have our backgrounds, we have our foiled hexagon frames, and we have our stamped and embossed and die cut greetings. So it's time to put it all together now. This is the fun part. After you have mass produced all of these different um, items, you can play. Because they're not all gonna be exactly the same, I've got several sizes of hexagons. We have lots of different greetings and different floral blooms. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda of just lay them out and place them how I think I want them to go. And I left this in the video so you could really see like the thought process and how I plan out my cards. Once I have all of these planned out and I know exactly how I am going to put these together, what sentiments go with which card, where the sentiment is going to lay the nicest on each background, I can go ahead and adhere everything to the background design. Now I opted today to adhere everything except for the greetings because I do wanna add some splatter, but I do not want to splatter my sentiment strip in this case. So you're gonna see me adhere my frame, the florals, and um, yeah, the frame and florals, pardon me, on the background. We are gonna use foam adhesive for this, and I am gonna speed up the video just a little bit while I am adhering all of those components. Something fun over there on the right side of the screen with the two hexagon frames and adhering them like this to the card is you can really kind of embellish each little frame like this. And I like that the smaller ones, you can do multiples on your frame. I did end up using three of the big ones. I had a, maybe one, one or two leftover frames, which is fine. I like to keep all those little pieces like this and I can always pull them out and use them for something else. Once I have everything kind of where I think it's gonna go, it is time to put it together. So I'm pretty happy with this. I think the card set is going to look beautiful. Um, you can see that I kind of played around with the flowers and the flower placement. I love that there's like some little tiny blooms from the Peony Fantasy, which works really nicely if you want to um, you know, kind of mix and match, I guess. So I did move a couple little things around. And this is the super sped up adhering it all to my card. Now you could glue it directly to the background. That would be much quicker. But I did pop everything up with foam. Foam to me just adds that beautiful dimension from what is in the foreground of your card compared to the background and helps not make it quite so flat. Uh, foam is magic. I highly recommend if you want to elevate your cards a little bit, try using foam. So here I am just piecing all of my foam on the back of the flowers and the frames and adhering it all down. And I'm just keeping the greeting banner with the card and then moving them over to the side as I'm working. You can see the, the process for the mass producing this way. And you could make even more than this. Let's say that you foil multiple Peony Fantasy panels, you ink them in different colors, maybe you wanna mix and match the colors per card, whatever the case may be, and you wanna make a card set for a friend or family to give as a gift, it would be beautiful. And these kind of sets work so well for that. I love this little bloom kind of up here. I think that's kind of fun. All right, let's add this last one and of course two frames. They do overlap a little bit. So the second frame when I go to adhere this one, I do wanna leave off the foam under where it is going to overlap the other frame. So it lays nice and flat. 
And then I'm being very choosy with where the foam goes under the florals. I did forget to mention that because where it, if it overlaps, you definitely don't want foam um, on any of the places where it overlaps. And I did add two banners to this particular card. I thought it looked nice like that. Okay, so now I am ready to splatter and I am using my favorite gilded foundry wax from Tim Holtz. And we're just going to spatter the, each of these and then I will heat set them all at once. This does tend to dry pretty quickly. You can see there's a whole bunch dried in my box actually. So I like to kind of splatter all of them. Then I heat set them and you do want to heat, sell, heat set the foundry wax. Otherwise it is just going to dry and rub off. And when you heat it, it gets that gilded effect. So you're gonna start seeing each of the cards have these beautiful gold specks all over. Um, some are on the flower, some are on the background, some are on the frames. This is what I was looking for. And then the sentiment is going to be that bright white banner with the gold em embossing, which is beautiful. Next, we are going to adhere our banners with a little foam adhesive. Most of my banners, I really felt like they needed to be tucked in. So some are tucked underneath the edge of the frame. Some are tucked into the flowers. This one goes kind of over the top or center of the frame, I guess you want to say. It really just depended on placement. What looked best per design? Got to get that one tucked in there a little bit. I wanted that one little floral bloom to overlap the banner a bit and then it also is going to overlap down here. Perfect. Finally, we are going to take some creamsicle, pretty pink posh pearls, and we're gonna add those to all of the cards. And I chose just one color today. I felt creamsicle matched the best, gives that beautiful, elegant look. Once we have all of our little pearls in place on each of the backgrounds, we will adhere each of these to a white top fold card base. And that is going to finish up our beautiful card set with one colorway, four cards. Uh, I hope this has inspired you to play with either the florals you have, or if you pick up some of the new products from the release, definitely let me know down in the comments. Uh, as always with my videos, I like to just inspire you to use even what you have. It doesn't have to be with the new products. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There's exclusive content. You'll receive a handmade birthday card from me during your birthday month, monthly lives for my top tier patrons, and more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please sub subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you're always notified when I have a video or go live. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you again next time.